Hello everyone, I'm Ben Coleman, one of your many hosts of the Florida Aviation Network, coming to you uh, with liquid sunshine coming down at the 45th annual Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo. And you know, we, we come here every year to promote aviation safety and to meet you fine folks that are, uh, that are here walking through the, the, the museum. And the thing that, uh, that impresses me most about the Sun and Fun activity is the volunteer spirit and we got Daryl, Tyler, got Jack, Jack Mendez, Captain Mendez, I'm sorry, Captain on uh, camera one and uh, got Bill helping with the floor and just a multitude of folks. Uh, uh, Sierra is even helping uh, in the background with, uh, with getting our folks on and off the set but volunteerism is the truest form I think of patriotic uh, spirit in, the, in, the, uh, in, our, in our culture. You mix that with the, the public service aspect of people that do things selflessly to help others. And that brings us to our current guests here. How's that for a segue to the Angel Flight Southeast? Wow, love it, love it. Pleasure to be here again, thank you. Steve Perello and Danny Flores. Thank you for having us here. A new face for the, uh, for the Angel Flight. Steve, tell us a little bit, what, what's going on with this new face here for uh, Angel Flight Southeast? We're, uh, we're excited to have Danny. We have some lofty goals that we want to meet, and uh, it was time to expand the, the team a little bit. We've got over a thousand volunteers, but only two uh, you know, full-time staff, and, and Danny is now our, our third person that's on board to be able to help us meet some of those lofty goals. Yeah, and talking about the lofty goals, um, you know, just like everyone else, the first one that we have is to meet budget. So that's something that we uh, thoroughly discuss with me coming on board. Um, and then, you know, moving forward into um, the goals that we have, the second thing that we want to do is um, focus on our goal of getting an air ambulance um, for Angel Flight Southeast to be able to cater to the people in need. So little by little, we're getting there. But just like everything else, it's baby steps. Well, Danny, I noticed that you uh, were talking about uh, meeting your goals, and I, I, I think I see some welts, uh, some welts on you a little bit. Uh, has that been beat into you about meet your uh, budgetary goal? Uh, no, I just um, for Danny, it, it's okay. Roll with it, man. <laughs> okay, roll with, it, roll with it. Yeah, these guys beat me up if I don't meet my budget. Uh, no, I just um, I'm really focused on the mission. Um, it's, it drives a lot of impact. We've done a lot of things where, you know, on a daily basis, you think about, hey, what is it that I want to do? Where do I want to go? And um, you mean you, you personally in your career or the, the organization? The organization. Okay. Um, so just the other day, um, I'm driving on my way to West Palm and um, I got a call from Steve. And Steve was like, hey, listen, we just got a liver transplant mission from St. Pete to Miami. So three-year-old Braden was able to go to St. Pete to Miami and have a 12-hour operation, which was successful. You know, so I have a three-year-old at home, and that just kind of makes it that more personal. You think about, you know, things that you take for granted. You know, you get sick once in a while or you get the flu. But there is children, there's adults that are fighting for their lives every day. Mm -hmm. And Angel Flight is the road to recovery. And uh, Danny, I don't th believe that many people really fathom or understand or breath wrap their head around uh, all that goes on in the background to help people that sometimes they, they just don't have the, the capacity, the, the financial capacity. Uh, you know, insurance money may have either run out or it just won't cover uh, an air ambulance flight. And I think that's where you guys pretty well uh, kind of step in a little bit. Our care traffic controllers are picking up the phone 24 hours a day to be able to get these missions off the ground and get these people to where they have to go. And, you know, in the case of the transplants, uh, as Danny said, and, and we're not doctors, we don't understand exactly 
you know, the, uh, the ins and outs of what organ takes, you know, how long. But on average, we have only three hours, and typically in the middle of the night, to be able to bring that person, to be able to get that organ. Mm -hmm. And they may have been waiting three, six, 12, 18 months to be able to get that organ. And if we don't get them there within that three hour window, they will lose it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, Mother Nature has worked with us and, and, the, and the, the weather's been good and the missions have worked well. And we've gotten those people to be able to get it. That was a great example that Danny brought up of a, of a three-year-old uh, getting a liver. There was one little boy a year and a half old. Four times we brought, four times missed. The fifth time was the charm. We actually asked uh, air traffic control to, to turn the plane around on the fourth one because we knew uh, in advance while the plane was flying that, that they weren't going to be able to get it. Mm. And so those are particularly special uh, you know, missions for us. We got one just a few weeks ago and the mother had called. She was 16 weeks pregnant and she said, I need a flight. The only doctor that can help me in my situation is up in Boston. She's in the Orlando area. And her situation was that her baby's brain was growing outside its skull. Ouch. I, and I had never even heard of anything like this before. And the only doctor that was going to be able to save this baby, and maybe even the mother, was, was up in Boston at the Children's Hospital. And sure enough, we were able to, to fill that flight um, quickly enough to be able to get that, that baby the mm. operation that, that was needed. So just fantastic. We do our missions each day where people with unusual cancers, unusual diseases, people who need special surgeries take place. But those are particularly special, of course, when it's the kids and, and when it's those, those dire needs. Stephen, again, I don't believe that uh, our, our viewers or, or passers-by realize just all that goes on in the background to make that happen. And uh, you've been doing this for many years now. 25 years as a volunteer <laughs> so, pilot. So, but you, and, and all the ins and outs, the coming and going, your, your air traffic folks, your, yeah. your dispatch. Uh, care went, traffic controllers. Care traffic <laughs> controllers. I, I, I did go by and see your operation. It was yeah. impressive. I mean, you, you get everything laid out, you get a board, you got all of your, your assets yes. uh, sitting there that you can pull from, mm -hmm. and, and they, they keep, they, it's, it's, it's like a switchboard of, uh, of a beehive of activity. And yes. this is where Danny uh, is going to be, I hope, learning as much as he can about what makes the business tick. So you can go and, and bring in more different, different aspects of the business as, uh, as you age. He's, he has, and he's heard you know, two concerns that we have, uh, three. One is, is meet the budget um, that we have each year so that we can get the, the couple of thousand flights uh, a year uh, you know, off the ground that we do. Two, if, if we can raise enough, we believe that we could actually place some strategic aircraft in places where we don't have enough pilots, mm -hmm. where they would be able to create a club. And the, and the main mission of the club would be to fly angel flight missions. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of pilots out there that really want to help. They just don't have their own aircraft. They're willing to pay 100% of the cost of the operating expense, so they'd be within the regs, but the actual acquisition cost of the airplane is prohibitive for them, and this would create a, a great opportunity. And then third, the uh, thing that, that Danny hears me complain about all the time, and now he's gotten experience on, on the phone himself, is these poor people that, that are called because they've only got one way to be able to get to that hospital, and that's using an air ambulance. The person is incapacitated. Um, the person has you know, something where they need that medical help on board. They've gotta be on a stretcher. It won't be done in a Cessna 172. They've gotta get there quickly. And these flights are 20, 25,000, $30,000 for one flight. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not knocking the air ambulance operators. They, they need to be able to make a profit to continue to do what they're doing. But there are a number of people that have to make the decision between getting the health care or, or, or not because mm -hmm. of money. Mm -hmm. And if we could get to the point, and this is Danny's ultimate goal, is we could get to the point where we could raise enough to be able to have our own air ambulance <clears throat> and run it professionally with professional pilots and, and, the, and the staff on board, the medical staff mm -hmm. to do it, it would be an absolute game changer. Mm -hmm. it, would, it would change a tremendous number of people's lives. Well, I'm sure that there's different levels of uh, your patients or your passengers. Uh, you know, if they're ambulatory, then that's good. <laughs> but uh, some have to be, you know, they're in a bed. 
And I don't know, uh, you may even have a few volunteers that, that have stretcher capability. I don't know. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, well, that's good. Yeah. Uh, because that gives you an opportunity to work into it. Yeah. But the, the aspects of uh, piloting, piloting, Danny, I know now that you've been, you've got your big toe in big the toe. water, mm -hmm. uh, water feels pretty good. Sure does. And uh, to, to take, take to the next step, you're only 24 years old. Right. You realize you have your whole life in front of you. Yeah, I think about it every day. You know how long um, it takes you to become a professional pilot? There's a couple different options um, that I have indulged in, you know, thinking how long it does. Yeah. Uh, but more than anything, right now, my main priority is just focusing on the mission. Um, you know, with the volunteer base that we have, more than anything, you know, just like Steve is mentioning, this air ambulance, you know, there's a lot of willpower, you know, a lot of people do want to put their time and effort mm -hmm. into something that makes a difference. And well, so... And, and there's a lot of people with airplanes here, Danny, yeah. that uh, they may not be either using, or uh, they used to fly a lot, but they lost their medical, uh, got successful in business, and I want something bigger, And uh, but I don't want to get rid of my baby. Uh, maybe I could just kind of find an organization somewhere that could appreciate the plane enough to keep it busy, maybe put it in a flying club or something. Did, did, did I strike a nerve there, Steve? Oh, yeah, exactly. Exactly okay. what we're looking yeah. for. Yep. Because they're, they're out there, and there they're may be some watching this presentation. If not, they know someone who's watching the presentation. They say, hey, uh, hey, Carl, what are you doing with your uh, 182 or your Cessna 172? We would greatly oh, appreciate it. I haven't flown it in years. It's not even an annual. Well, there's this outfit that could probably put it to good use. Um, talk to us about tax advantages. What if, uh, if there are there any advantages to uh, working with you guys? There are certainly. I, I think you know our pilots really do it because they want to do it, and um, some of them might be retired, some of them might be working and have the ability to take the day off from whatever they're they're doing. Um, and, uh, and that's their primary driver, but it doesn't hurt that it can be a tax deduction as well. You're doing something you love, uh, getting to be able to get up in the air and fly. Well, the fact that you can, you can reduce your taxes by a little bit can't, can't hurt. And we're always looking for volunteer pilots. And uh, I think I'm, I'm happy to announce that we, in the green room, we uh, just got our latest volunteer pilot. As a matter of fact, he, he will be able to fly uh, uh, from the water or, as, or in the as, air? As a matter of fact, it will be one of the widely more photographed aircraft uh, <laughs> Welcome uh, aboard. in the world. But we'll be glad to help. Melody and I are uh, we're, we're, we're fully behind your, your mission. Thank and you. Anything that we can do to help. Once we get the old CB up and going, uh, it, it'll be uh, also, and we use it for some promotional things for you too, because it's, uh, it's a unique it's a unique aircraft. It would be fantastic. And, uh, Thank you. We'll have some fun. Well, with you it. and the Florida Aviation Network and, and OB Young are, are always just wonderful to us. We really appreciate well, we're, it. Well, we're trying. And, uh, and, and again, the safety aspect, we, just, we haven't even scratched the surface on what, how deeply you guys look into making sure that your operations are well planned, uh, you're managed. I mean, you talked a lot about how weather seems to uh, ha happens to work in your favor or not. Uh, but somebody has to make those decisions. Are we go no go? Because you're flying with Part 91 uh, private pilots, uh, and you know that's that sometimes can be a wild card. Yes. And 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 you you vet your pilots. We do, well. we do. Uh, we we make sure that we we keep up with with any of the standards that are given to us by the FAA. But I think you know maybe more importantly, above and beyond the legal limits, we encourage safe flying, and mm -hmm. we we make sure that. Both our pilots know that you don't have to go on this. It's better to stay on the ground and, mm -hmm. and, and have another flight and another day. And even then the passengers, the passengers are very much briefed to not push the pilots. And you have to have a backup plan to be able to get there in case it doesn't work. Now, primarily the backup plan is I didn't get my chemotherapy treatment that day and, and you know, I'll go the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, even those transplant missions, frankly, we, make, we keep them within the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. So one way or another, you know, that, that person would hopefully still be able to get there or extend even just a little bit of time if they're driving on their way. Mm. A lot more convenient and, and comfortable if you can do it in a, in a private aircraft, of course. But, but it, it's our culture to make sure that uh, no go is, is just fine. Well, as you say, uh, and it's, it's kind of a, a routine, uh, takeoffs are optional. 
<laughs> landings are mandatory. Uh, and, and and again, I, I want to follow Danny's uh, progress Please. because, you know, and I, I kind of, I, I, I tossed the hook in the water and started reeling, <laughs> but you didn't bite, man. It doesn't take that long for you to start getting your, uh, get your toe in the water, get your, uh, your uh, student pilot license, third class medical, and uh, and then get up with the flight instructor, find an airplane, and go take some flying lessons. He's been taxiing so far. We haven't gotten him off the ground yet. It's true. It's true. Um, it's, it's definitely something that's appealing. Um, I mean, the way uh, Steve's described it to me, it's been more than, you know, a rush. You know, so it, it's something, you know, when you're a <laughs> child and then you turn 16 and you start to drive and you're on the car, you're like, mm -hmm. oh, okay. You know, so flying would definitely um, take that up a notch and um, I think the rush and excitement that you get from it and to be able to you know just be in the air by yourself and doing something like that excites me and it's definitely something that I, I would love to do. Well there's a lot of folks that when you start talking about getting your pilot's license at oh, and that's too expensive. It takes too much time. Too complicated these days. Airspace is just just too too, too, uh, too complex to really enjoy it. It's not fun anymore. Don't hang around those people. <laughs> hang around the people who says, yeah, you know, it's really not any more expensive than it was back in the 70s. It's all relative. It might cost a little bit, but if you want it, you can get it. You can achieve it. And it's out there, and it's attainable. And uh, you're young enough to where, heck, by the, you know, another couple of years, you could be well on your way. Uh, certified and uh, be, take some of these missions in the, in the flying club airplane. He is about to find uh, himself in the midst of 40 to 50 um, very enthusiastic volunteer pilots. A week from Friday, we're doing our annual pilot awards gala, mm. and it's sponsored by the Franklin uh, G. Norris, Dr. Franklin G. Norris Foundation, mm -hmm. and it's at River Ranch. Well, that's and not we far treat our pilots here. every year for a weekend there to say thank you so much for spending all this time. Some of these pilots are doing 20, 30, 50 missions, you know, in a year. And uh, so we, we, we throw them a little party, give them, give them awards, and, and uh, show them a good time. Sure. And it was absolutely critical that, that Danny's there to be able to, to, to meet them and, and yeah. uh, get involved with them. And I, I'm sure they're going to be sounding just like you. Uh, you, the good me or the bad me? The good you. The good oh, you. the good me. Is there a bad me? The, the, the good bad side. me is, oh, it's too expensive. It, it takes too long. It's too complicated these days. Not like it used to be. Well, no, it's not like it used to be. In many cases, it's a lot better. Uh, we've got more technology. Used properly, technology can enhance your safety. Technology can also uh, create a little bit of a problem because you still got to fly the airplane. I mean, that, that GPS will not land itself in a, bit, in a steep crosswind. Um, so keep your piloting skills up and learn how to fly a tail dragger. Mm. It's, if, if, has anybody ever told you that? No. All right, first, right here. On, and we've got 150,000 <laughs> people watching this. But if you, if you get your primary uh, stick and rudder skills. Okay. And Steve, you'll back me up on this, won't you? I'm not a tail uh, wheel guy. I, I've only done tricycle. Oh. Yeah, so I can't back oh, you up on that part. Steve, I'm, oh. I'm, oh, I touched you. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, well, we have to turn that around yeah, because so. uh, you know anything with the tailwheel, uh, you you fly it as soon as you get in the aircraft and it's unchalked. Right. As yeah. soon as you untie it, you're flying that airplane. But it's a lot. It's a lot of challenge. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but it really does give you the stick and rudder skills that uh, that help out uh, throughout your career. Right. Um, well, if you want to come by, I mean, I I, I would love to learn. You know, um, more than anything, I, I would love to take up some of your time and show you personally, you know, what the operations looks like maybe one more time and give you a feel for everything new that we have going on, you know, and, and that, that's what makes it so great. You know, you meet a very, very large base of people that are trying to be a part of what you're doing. And so when I meet a lot of people, they're like, hey, do you fly? And I'm like, no, but, oh, you right. know, yeah. and then yeah. you start thinking yeah. about, well, you know, when I have the opportunity to do so, I'll be able to make even that much more impact in what Angel Flight does. The proper reply is I'm in training. Yeah, right. I'm in training. I'm in, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in flight training. You are in flight training. We just yeah. finished a little bit of a flight training review just here, talking about tailwheel aircraft. <laughs> That's all part of your education. So uh, 
keep it going. Uh, and and Danny, I think you're new to the group since last since this past year. Yes. How how long ago have you? How long has it been since you Just joined? Two months now. Two months. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's great. Uh, and you know the, the exciting thing is to see a fresh new face, younger face, than these old guys with gray hair and you know teeth falling out, and <laughs> bodybuilding and all that. But uh, <laughs> but you're in good shape. Stay in good shape. And uh, Steve, it's always a pleasure to talk oh, with you and your so group. Thank you so much. Pleasure here. Danny, I'm going to... Oh, got it. And uh, we're going to look forward to keeping track of you and your flight training and you and your flight, uh, flying club uh, concept. And hopefully we'll hear from some folks out there. Steve Perillo, uh, Angel Flight Southeast. So Google it. Um, or whatever search engine you like to use. I don't mean to... This is not a Google commercial, but... Ben Coleman, one of your hosts here, Florida Aviation Network, 45th Annual Sun and Fun International Fly-In and Expo. We'll see you next interview.